Hello, everybody, and uh, nice to meet you all. Thanks for having me here. Uh, today, I want to talk about getting players to your on-chain game. Um, for some background, I'm one of the co-founders of Primodium, which is a factory and base building on-chain game with uh, currently around uh, 250 daily active uh, players. So for starters, uh, I want to share some of our metrics for the last uh, couple of versions of our game. Um, as you can see from June till today, we've launched a total of six versions, um, each version successively getting a bit more users than the last up until the most recent ones, uh, receiving the most number of players. And we're currently hovering at about 260, 250 uh, per day on average. Uh, and so I wanted to share some of the insights and learnings that we've had for getting these players uh, and really how we uh, tried to grow our player base. Um, so for some context, uh, Number one, there were no growth hacks or any sort of clever referral system that I'd be able to, to get into or, or teach you here. Uh, not because I don't want to, but just because there, there really wasn't uh, much of that. And uh, the reason for that is number two, um, because the only real lever uh, that we pulled was just trying to make the product better. Um, and number three, crucially, uh, I don't think we would have been able to pull it off uh, if it weren't for us building an on-chain game. Uh, but again, it's it's also not because of the benefits uh, or affordance, uh, affordances of building an on-chain game, which is uh, very much echoed in the rest of this conference, uh, but for reasons I'll get into below. Uh, and that's because, in our view, uh, building an on-chain game uh, on top of everything else uh, is also a large distribution arbitrage. And uh, what I mean by that is that because the space is still extremely new, uh, competition for players is actually not that stiff, uh, such that Having a great product is probably all you really need uh, to succeed for the time being. So to illustrate this, for example, if you were to be building and on oh sorry, if you were to be building in a crowded space, let's say B2B SaaS in a web2 world, this is generally the experience that you'll have, which is very different from an on-chain game. Uh, you'd start with building a pretty landing page uh, with your product. As, uh, as you can see here with a fairly compelling tagline and the logos, and some of you guys may have experienced building products like that, uh, you post it on social media on our product hunt uh, or other equivalents, and then you pray for the algorithm to surface your post so you can get a bunch of users. But to your disappointment, uh, it doesn't get you any traction, as you can see here, uh, which is probably an experience that some of us may have had the misfortune to experience. Um, so going back to games, uh, this is not B2B SaaS, but the idea is similar um, because distribution and getting players in a crowded space is so difficult. Um, it's so hard to iterate upon. Uh, and it's also very hard to know what to do after uh, you fail to get any attention uh, after a much long-awaited anticipated launch on your end, uh, which is very unfortunate for what happened to this guy and very similar to the experience with launching a B2B SaaS product in a crowded space these days. So compare this to that, though. This was our actual experience of launching uh, Primodium, which is an on-chain game, as you know. But crucially, it's not in a crowded space. Uh, and it was fairly straightforward uh, to get the attention of would-be players. Uh, so we launched this at the end of April this year after working on the MVP for about three months or so. Uh, and this was what it looked like at the time. And as you can see, it wasn't very good. Uh, but because it was novel and because it was, wasn't, again, in a crowded space, uh, we were able to get a fair amount of attention of around 400 players who tested out the first version of Primodium, which, again, is a very different experience from launching, say, the Steam game or trying to post something on Reddit and then hope that people eventually pay attention to it. Now, obviously, uh, because of the quality of the product, uh, most people dropped off uh, in the first day. Uh, but because we learned so much from the user patterns, uh, the bugs, and the game loop improvements, uh, we were able to iteratively uh, build it up to our current version today, uh, which, because of that foundation, we were able to see uh, continued growth in our game uh, in the last versions, which has now surpassed uh, the numbers of our, even our initial launch. Um, and so, really, coming back to it, uh, I think building an on-chain game today is much more similar to building a mobile game, say, in 2009, uh, where most things are able to get attention fairly easily uh, simply because they're on the market. Uh, and so you probably remember back then uh, when you got your first uh, smartphone, you were probably downloading most 
things in the app store and a lot of them being games, uh, simply just to try them. Uh, and you probably also remember uh, that you don't do that anymore uh, because the space is now very saturated. So I would say uh, launch fast, uh, productize your games. Uh, the market is early and it's okay if most of your players leave soon after because at least you'll have a group of players that you can ask for feedback on and iterate upon, uh, which is much more to ask for than what you'd be able to get in a different space that isn't a non-chain game. And so the question I'd like to leave you all with is uh, to ask uh, what's stopping you from launching uh, your first productized version of your game today uh, to get it in the hands of your players uh, so you can start getting market share uh, because time is uh, limited at the moment. <laughs> and uh, to really think on whether or not the reason why you're not launching is, uh, is an actual blocker or if it's simply uh, feature creep. Thank you very much for your time. I mean, the the name of the talk was like getting players in on-chain games, and uh, you, you, maybe you could like tell more about what kind of like uh, practices helped you in unboxing users, and uh, like share more about that topic. Well, was a was a question on best practices for how we got our players, right? So, uh, honestly. The as as I've uh, as I've tried to elaborate on that, really there wasn't much that we did uh, specifically on like trying to hack something together. Um, I think we pretty much launched our game uh, on Twitter uh, because there was a bit of nerd sniping, but being an on-chain game and being the genre and, and the genre of the game being a factory building game, that people were inherently interested in that. Because the product wasn't good though, people left very very soon after. And all that was left for us to do at that point on was really just try to be very brutally honest with where our game wasn't good. Uh, so for example, it was slow, it was very laggy, the game loop wasn't really there. Um, and then really just iterating on top of that so that we can try to get more. Because at the end of the day, like we can try to hack it as much as we want by like, I don't know, doing a ton of Twitter spaces or you know, trying to get cross promotion from, from bigger people and so on. But, it, but if your product's not good, um, which ours certainly wasn't when we launched. Everybody's going to leave eventually. And so, sure, you get a big spike, you know, in the beginning, and that, that feels great, but it's not going to last. Um, and it's certainly something we've experienced. In terms of concrete stuff, I guess one one bit of learning that may have been better was that, I mean, we, we tried to be pretty ingrained with the uh, rest of the on-chain gaming community. I mean, us being here today and also... You know, being friends with Sohan, for example, <laughs> uh, and, the, and the rest of the folks uh, in this community, which which has been great and, and you know, getting people that are interested in launching games to also be interested in, in, in our game. Um, hey, uh, so I was wondering if you, um, like, how you approach rolling out new features and if you have any guidance about that. Any guidance about rolling out new features and how you approach it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so uh, we had a fairly uh, thought out roadmap in the beginning of our game. So while we were building the first version, because we wanted to get it out as soon as possible, uh, so we got it out in about three months, we had to cut down on a ton of features that otherwise we'd, <laughs> we'd like to include. And so for those, they, they kind of just get rolled out into the successive versions. Uh, so an example is that, like for example, in the beginning, we didn't have buildings that could be upgraded, uh, we push that to a future version. Uh, currently, the game doesn't have trading. We wanted to have that. Um, and then we push that to the next version as well. Um, and then on deciding which features uh, are, are going to be added, uh, it's just not a lot of secret there. It's just metrics driven. So just, uh, you know, we try something, see if it makes the user's number go, user numbers go up. If it doesn't, then we don't do it. Uh, if it does, then, then we push it on to the next update. Uh, and continue doing that. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, uh, that's, uh, that's, I'd, I'd say that's pretty much it. And I think a large part of that, though, is also just being brutally honest with what aspect of your game sucked. Um, well, our game in this case. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we were, there, there, there was a, a lot of game loop problems, for example, in like, in like two, three versions ago. I think there still are a lot of room for improvement today that we're 
fairly cognizant of it. We weren't lying to ourselves about that. We're just like, okay, we fix those and then we push that on to the next version. So user-driven uh, and just being honest and, and that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah.